So it's, it's been almost 27 years, but I still remember that day. It was a sunny, clear blue sky, some white fluffy clouds floating by. And my wife and I were preparing for our daughter's uh, third birthday party. Um, we invited a bunch of family and friends over, and we still had a number of things that we had to do uh, before people arrived, when suddenly the doorbell rang. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, which family member came over early? Because there's always one, right, that shows up too early? So I went out to the door and opened it, and it was this, this nicely dressed middle-aged lady, and you know, she had something in her hand, so I was thinking maybe she was one of those political survey people or you know, someone trying to convince us to buy something. Um, but instead of offering something to sell, she asked me if I had a personal relationship with God. Now, I was surprised and really didn't know how to respond. It was the first time that somebody had knocked on my door asking me about my relationship with God. So I kind of paused for a second and then I politely um, told her that no, I didn't have time to talk to her about God. Um, we were preparing for my daughter's birthday party. And she still went ahead and reached out and handed me a booklet that contained information about her faith. And she wished me a, a nice day and smiled and then left. So I'll admit, I felt a little bit relieved, but I, I felt bad at the same time. Um, I felt that I'd turned somebody away. Now, I wasn't a deacon then, right? I was just average you know, father, husband, and employee. But I had been listening to Catholic things, and I remembered the CD that I had. So I ran and got it, and I ran out the door to try and find her. And I caught her across the street asking my neighbor the same question. And my neighbor looked just as surprised as I had been. So I walked up to the lady and I said, you know, I am so sorry, but you know, you left me some information about your faith. You know, please accept this that kind of talks about the faith of my, my family and I that we have. I gave her a copy of the truth. I mean, literally, it was a CD labeled The Truth by Father Larry Richards. And if you haven't ever heard it, I recommend you go get, ahead and get it. I never heard back from her. And I tell you this story today because today's gospel reading is that God has called all of us here to be witnesses to his truth and to proclaim his truth to the whole world. Before the Angelus, on December 26, 2020, Pope Francis gave a reflection on the witness of St. Stephen, a deacon who had been martyred. And he exhorted those who were present, and really he exhorted us at the same time. He said, be a witness to Jesus Christ in the way you conduct your ordinary, everyday life, and it will become a masterpiece for God. This message is appropriate because God has continually called his people to be witnesses to others throughout history. You know, this started with a couple, Adam and Eve. Of course, they messed up. But then it grew to include a family, Abraham and his sons. And then it became a great nation of Israel. And then finally, it grew to the church universally. And why did God do this? He did it to bring his light to the world. You know, after the fall, God had a plan to save all of us. And not only us here in the church, but the whole world. And he's given us the privilege, think about that, the privilege to participate in this mission. God's called us to be his witnesses. And in today's first reading from Exodus, God tells his people Israel that they would be to him a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. You know, the author of Exodus wasn't talking to the ministerial priesthood that served in the temple. He was talking to everyday Israelites, you know, the, the moms and the dads and the grandmas and the granddads and the employees and the teachers and the laborers, I mean, everybody, every person. He told them, if you hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people. So all the earth is mine. You know, God was telling his people back then, and he was giving them a special mission, a priestly mission, to be his light to all the earth. You know, by the way that they lived, you know, God gave them special instructions, which made them different than their surrounding neighbors. You know, we as Catholics, we as Christians, God's given us his instructions through his scriptures and through the church so that we could lead different lives that people could see so that we can be a light to everyone. You know what? 
God told us the same thing. He basically made us priests, just like he did the nation of Israel back in those days. The catechism of the Catholic Church says, Christ has made the church a kingdom, priests, for his God and Father. The whole community of believers is, as such, priestly. The faithful exercise their baptismal priesthood through their participation, each according to his own vocation. In Christ's mission as priest, prophet, and king, and through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, the faithful are consecrated to be a holy priesthood. You know, this is the common priesthood of the faithful that's exercised by the unfolding of the baptismal grace. You know, it's a life of faith, hope, and charity, a life according to the Spirit. And through these, we become witnesses to Jesus. Pope Francis said, we are called to bear witness to Jesus where we live, in our families, at work, everywhere, even just by giving the light of a smile, a light that's not our own. It comes from Jesus. Small things, you know, they change history because they open the door. They open the window to Jesus' light. And sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes, you know, we're afraid when we hear that we're called to be witnesses, right? We might think to ourselves, I am not a priest, a religious, a deacon, a theologian, none of that. And so maybe because of that, we don't take that first step to be a witness for Christ. You know, I didn't feel qualified to really talk to that lady, but I was able to go ahead and give her that CD to explain things better than I thought I could. And you know what? If you're like that, you're in good company. You're in company with me too. It says, in today's gospel, who did Christ send out? Who did he send out? He sent out four fishermen, a tax collector, and a zealot. Kind of putting it in modern terms, it's like sending out four guys from the TV show, The Deadliest Catch, an IRS agent, and a mercenary. Um, these guys didn't have theology degrees, and they weren't given any special courses in public speaking. In fact, if you look closely at the surrounding passages, it looks like they were sent out to learn as they went, kind of sink or swim. And the only thing that they had to share was their personal experiences of Christ. You know, they could share with others what they had seen and heard Jesus as they walked and they talked with him. You know what, we can do the same. I remember when Mary and I bought our first new car together. <laughs> She's down there. Um, and we were really excited about it. I wanted to share it with all my friends, right? It was a Jeep Cherokee Sport, a white one, stick shift. I loved it. And it's probably one of the most fun cars we've ever owned. And I drove it to the office and I brought all my friends to come out to take a look at it. You know, while I was telling them about it and showing it to them, I never once thought about what I would say or how they would receive it. I wasn't worried about it. I wasn't worried about how they were going to react to the news that I wanted to share. I simply wanted to share with them the joy of driving this really cool new car. So why do we worry so much about how people will react? If we share with them the joy that we've received, the joy that we've experienced from knowing and loving Jesus. We don't need to have a rock solid theological argument for everything, you know, or expert knowledge of all the church's doctrine. I mean, it's essential that we know our faith and we read the scriptures. I mean, if you got a catechism of the Catholic Church, it's so beautiful, kind of thick, but it's a beautiful document that talks to us about everything we believe as Catholics. So then, how do we go about witnessing to others? You know, like the disciples in today's gospel, we need to share with others what we've seen God do in our lives and what we've learned from him in the scriptures and what the church has taught us. And sometimes, as St. Francis was once purported to say to his friars, we can even use words. You know, our witness is crucial in today's world just as it was back then. People today, like in the gospel reading, are troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. And they're searching for answers to the deepest needs in their souls. Jesus sends us out today, just as he did his 12, to minister to the sick in mind and body, to raise people from death-dealing despair, and to cast out the addictions that hold our brothers and sisters bound. We, like the people of Israel, are called to act as liaisons between God and the world. You know, God loved us when we were our most unlovable, right? Well, we must love others even when they're their most unlovable, and lead them back to him, who is divine mercy and love himself. And we, like Jesus' disciples, are sent to be witnesses to others about what God has done for us and to proclaim to others what he desires to do for them, you know, to raise them from the darkness of death, to heal them from their addictions, 
and to release them from their bondage to sin so that they too can live in the fullness of the grace of the daughters and sons of their father. Today is Father's Day. So I want to wish each of you fathers and stepfathers, adoptive fathers, grandfathers, spiritual fathers, um, everyone else today who is a father in some way to someone else and who witnesses to and proclaims the love of the father in your own lives. Happy Father's Day. <laughs>